Welcome back, Phillies and Dinnercles, to a brony place Minecraft. I'm just out here, uh, a little ways east of the house. Actually, a little, a, a lot of ways. And I came to show you guys something. This is a sequoia tree. It's, uh, pretty big. It's one of the few trees in the game that doesn't drop any, um, saplings, though. So, do try to be careful with them. Fortunately, that isn't too hard, because once you get it cut, doop doop doo so many logs! Oh my gosh, so many logs. Uh, in fact, there's actually so many, so many logs that I've got to throw some of this stuff out, like the chicken, and might throw out some of the seeds. Let's see what we can grab first. Oh, see, already worked. You're full immediately. Get rid of the, the dacite and the other dacite. And then we're still full. Get rid of the onions, because, you know, they're just onions. And the wild oats. And, ah, gosh. One. Okay, there we go. That's a, that's a pretty hefty load. And, uh, we're gonna take that back with us, because we can't, there's no way we can carry another one. We're gonna take that back with us, and through the magic video editing, it's not gonna take any time at all. Well, for you. You can think of it as, like, you guys are gonna be moving the speed of light, and I have to be stuck. Being all like, I'm on the speed of the not night. So, I'll see you back there in a bit so we can get our charcoal thing started. Cheerio! Oh, morning everyone. We're back. Here we are back at the house. We've got all that sequoia stocked up. And, um, we're ready to make us a charcoal pile, except that we actually already have one ready to go right here. We'll just dig up some of this one, and I'll show you guys what, uh, how I. Ah, get... I'll show you guys how I go about making these charcoal piles. As uh, one of you pointed out, at least one of you... Oh, buy some buggy. Hmm. Hold on, let's attack from the sides. Nope, still bugging. Give us a moment here. Right, there we go. Problem solved. Looks like the uh, iron shovel was not recognized by Terra Firmacraft as being a legit shovel. Which, I guess to be fair, it wasn't, really. So let's just uh, pick up this charcoal. I went ahead and deposited all my sequoia planks, or, well, logs, in the back of the house. We can pick those up anytime. Let's go ahead and pick this up. As someone once pointed out, way back on the first charcoal pile, the uh, reason that we hardly got any charcoal at all was because we used very 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 small amount of wood and that gave us a like a single layer of charcoal this time what I had done here is I had stacked everything completely full which or almost completely full and that took quite a while but you know it worked and actually we've got enough wood here that once that runs out we can have a second charcoal stack going pretty well so what we're going to do is, uh, I should actually get some more, but we'll start working on this right now. First, we're going to grab this native copper. I'm going to need my molds. Get rid of this. I'll go ahead and grab this considerite and this nugget as well. And that bowl of unshaped tin. And let's get cra let's get cracking. Right. I'm going to go with the tin first. Just because. Well, no, it looks like there's something in there already. What's in there? Uh, it doesn't say. But my guess is copper. So let's put the tiny bits of copper in first. Uh, native copper nuggets. Maybe? Maybe? Hmm? I may not be happy with whatever's in there. We might have to break it open. Let's find out. Uh, hmm. Well, let's go ahead and put that up. It's a little odd because there isn't anything there, but... Oh, wow. It's already really white again. But that's what happens with Lumeries. You get stuff congealing at the bottom. Let's go ahead and dump a bunch more coal, charcoal, whatever it's called in there. I almost picked that stuff back up. What, kind of what I'm going for. Come on. 
we get that? No. It's not you know like no you can't pass. You have like a lot of coal in there too. Alright, let's put the bellows up. Bellows it up, yo. See if we get any uh, of this ore to melt. Might, might not. Oh, something already went down. Some of it melted. Down to 63 kilograms. 9 kilograms of ore. Come on. Empty out. Got stuff to do. I, I gotta show everyone how to melt their copper properly. Let's go. What are you doing in there? Come on. Stop getting cold. Bellows it up. Now the bellows, as you can see, it, it gets it nice, you know, it gets it right around there ish, but not too much higher. Now you can't use, it's very important, you can't use um, coal in this. You can only use charcoal. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that coal, like actual mineable coal and stuff, contains all sorts of um, sulfuric impurities. There we go. There we go. And let's put that brick back. It contains all sorts of sulfuric impurities that... There we go. There we go. Now we're good. And uh, those sulfuric impurities will embrittle and destroyify whatever you have in there. And that would be very sad for you, because then you'd be all like, Aww, what's happened to my stuff? And you'd be very sad indeed. Let's come up a bit more. I'll just a bit more charcoal in there. I should really be like, you know, doing this mathematically, but there we go, we have enough charcoal now. Coal it up. Come on, keep melting. Keep a melting and a smelting. Thank goodness, it's baking. It's time, isn't it? Copper does that. It's obnoxious. Oh, while it does that, let's... Because even if it uh, melts all the way and fills that one up, and it will, it'll still have more left. So let's grab the rest of this charcoal, because we're going to need it. La da da da! Grabbing some charcoal. Grabbing lots of charcoal. All the charcoal in. Oh, great. Now we're shoveling. Make a new one because the iron one is not recognized as being real. Just for a reference and reminder, if you're already up to the point where you're using your scribing table and making real tools and not like crap tools like this, then you can go ahead and um, you, you probably know already, but if you don't, the plans for the scribing table are the same as the patterns for the napping. So anytime you're napping stone tools, you can use those same patterns for your scribing table. Of course, there are a lot more options available for your scribing and metallurgy table and stuff than there are for napping. So it's... oh, it's starting to get dark. No good. Great! Awesome! So we got that. We have a little bit left in there, so let's take this. There we go. And... Go to bed. Haha! <laughs> what the... It's like a hole in the wall right there. A glitch in the world. We're gonna go to bed and wake up tomorrow. Ah, refreshing. And what are we up to today? Well, we're continuing to smelt copper because that's the whole point of this. We're just gonna. Oh, look, it's completely empty. We're gonna toss that in there. And we'll start throwing some charcoal in there too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I, I think I missed. I think I miscounted that. Okay, so we have an equal amount of ore and coal, and normally when we put in, like, that's a full stack. So when we put in a full stack of the other stuff, we get one with a little bit extra, and here we're expecting double that. So we bellows it up. We lose some coal. And that's just the way it works. Until you um, get everything melted, you're just going to lose a little bit extra charcoal. So be ready for that. Be ready. You do need, by the way, you do need these bellows. Your copper is not going to melt without it. 
And once you get start doing things that uh, melt at a higher temperature than copper, such as um, your iron and your bronzes and your silver, I'm not 100% on gold. I'm pretty sure silver melts at a higher temperature than copper. Once you start melting these things at a higher temperature, there's just no way to do it without the bellows. You need them. So I'm going to keep getting some more of this. We'll go back and check. And we also want to start on the forge. So here's how a forge works. A forge is not a forge is not a bloomery. You cannot smell ores there. So we're going to keep our bloomery forever and always. A forge does not need a special crafted lock. A forge is essentially just a geometric figure. I mean, it's like an alchemy circle, basically. Well, it's more like an alchemy clock tower in Minecraft. What we need for a forge is stone. It doesn't really matter what type of stone. Stone. So I should really double check before I say things like that, because then I'm going to try like, something else. But I'm going to use bricks, because I like the bricks. They look really nice. There we go. Awesome. Um, grab that. No, no, stop working. Go ahead and grab the rest of that. And then we'll put another one in there. Now each one of these holds two kilograms of ore, or well, of output. And as I'm sure you noticed, I put like 40 something in there, and I got less than 40 out. Yeah, that's the way it works. So let's check that. Yeah, a lot of coal. Excellent. Bellows that up. Bellows it up. And grab some bricks to make a forge. And that's probably where we will end the day is building the forge. Um, using it and. Where are my bricks? Here they are. Using the forge will wait for tomorrow when we can also start showing crafting. And this banana tree, I. Like, won't grow any taller and it's in the way. I don't know if I like it. I don't, I don't really think I do. So, what do we need? Well, we're gonna need. The stone bottom. Okay. And then we need essentially to uh, cover it up with this. And that's basically a forge. We want to get really, if we want to do this really well, what we do is we'll jump up one, dig down one, and then, no, oh, better dig this too, so I don't know if we can reach the bottom. We'll put this at the bottom there. That might work. That, that might that might sneak it. And then to use the forge, you toss some coal in and use your fire starter on it. And if you've done it correctly, it pops up. Of course, being a fire starter, it's like annoying and hard and the work and all that. But yeah, see. So it's going to take a couple fire starters to get it going, assuming you've done it right. And of course, if you haven't, then it, it, it's just going to be frustrating. Check this. How are we doing? Oh, perfect. Apparently we forgot to put something in there to catch it all. Way to go, us! Look at this, we're just making a ludicrous amount of stuff here. Just ridiculous. Compared to how much, think about this, compared to how much or how long it took us to get even one ingot together by finding rocks on the ground, and now we're just like, oh yeah, pff, ingots? Yeah, I got like five of them. You want some? And and there's still more left. We, we didn't take all of it. There's still more left. It, it's ridiculous. I'm moving this up a little bit so we can... doesn't look as nice, but if it gets our forge working... No, our fire starter failed. Now the thing about the forge is that it has to be open to the air, like this. You can't have a forge that's like blocked off. You can't have a forge inside. It's gotta be open to the air. Alright, there we go. It turns out it takes nine. There we go. It takes nine to get it going. But here's our forge. Um, now, like I, I was about to say, it's it has to be it has to have a hole that goes to the sky. This, that it has to be open to the air. If it's not open to the air, then your forge is not going to work. But 
that doesn't mean you can't have like a chimney thing going on. You can still have um, a long chimney like you do here. I'm just going to toss the last bit of the copper in as well as some coal. Hey, get in there. There we go. Uh, almost good enough. Uh, you can't just have a... You don't have to have something that's completely open like this. Some of the designs on the wiki, at least, show forges that have really nifty little, um... They've got, they've got really nifty, like, chimney effects going on, where it actually has, um, a bend in it, and it comes straight up. And that way, rain won't put it out, whereas here, rain will. Also, you can put, like, let's say you want to walk over it, you can put a trap door on it, and it considers that to be air. So this is what the forge screen looks like. You can use it to warm this stuff back up, like let's say I wanted to melt it down. Some of it I probably do actually want to work. So I'll put it in here. And I'll throw some charcoal in. They keep it going, keep it warm. Maybe these two as well. There we go. Come back over here. Uh, not quite yet. We'll close that up. And that's that's that. Um, yeah. So that's we have a forge. Huzzah! We have a bloomery, and we are on our way to working these things right over here. Forge can't be used to melt any metals, but uh, we'll get into more about exactly how this works. For now, every pony. We'll catch you all next time when we start actually working all these metals. So. Until then, keep on trotting.